What's good and welcome back to another episode of They Gonna Feel Me podcast. It's your boy. I'm your host, Reese. We got my boy Rob. We got my boy Al C, the fried chicken connoisseur. And we got my boy Dino Hendrix down there. This is episode 32. Uh, but before we get started, make sure y'all like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, and tell a friend to tell a friend because we want people to feel us. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, how y'all feeling, fellas? How y'all how y'all feeling? Y'all feeling good today? Good. Good. Amazing. Ready to get this work. Spectacular. Bet, bet, bet. All right. So getting into our first topic, we all know if you haven't lived under a rock, Mr. Tesla himself is supposedly buying Twitter for over $40 billion. So we would like to know what, what you guys think about that. You know, how you feeling about that? Man, I got a I got a lot of different uh different mixed emotions um about this. My initial my initial one was like, man, why? Why? Because I was reading some of the things that he was saying in regards to uh freedom, freedom of speech and not wanting to be political or democratic or republican. And I'm looking past all I'm looking past all of that and thinking, hey man, if he takes if he takes any kind of oversight off of Twitter as we know it now with no uh with no regulation, what's gonna happen? A barrage of misinformation. I'm talking about it's gonna be like the floodgates, the floodgates have been open and we thought it was bad, we thought it was bad before. But if there's no regulation or, you know, under the guise of free speech, you know, because people always you always use free speech uh, as an excuse to uh, promote hate, promote bigotry, promote uh, misinformation. I mean, just call it what it is to just uh, propaganda and lies under the guise of uh, hey, it's my freedom of speech, freedom of speech. But by the same token. You do have freedom of speech. You do. But there's not freedom of consequence. So it has to be some kind of consequences behind some of the things that you say. And I don't think uh, this just me and I might I might be wrong. But I, I feel like if he does some of the things that he's been talking about doing, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think it's going to be good. I don't think it's going to be good for Twitter. Well, some of the things he's talking about has been good. Like, I think he's talking about vetting actual people and then getting rid of some of the spam bots, uh, you know, like he's talking about that. And, you know, like that as an idea is 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 cool. He's talking about making the platform a lot more open source. I mean, I think one of the bigger things that people are just having the issue with, like, I mean, like not only is he talking about like, you know, this issue of free speech. I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, like you said, it, it could just become like the wild, wild west of racism. You know, just imagine what black Twitter might look like if you like basically got a new extreme right white Twitter that basically comes out of nowhere. Uh, maybe even a, a racist, you know, I don't know, Nazi Twitter for all we know. Like, and he's like just sitting back and letting it go because he just wants to see, I don't know, everybody cannibalize each other. You know, like, I mean, there, there's a lot of that with any good ideas that he might put into the stratosphere. I think like there's always that possibility of just how it could become a much more ugly and hateful place as a byproduct. And like that's something that, you know, it will it could potentially either make that website pop for the wrong reasons or destroy it, you know, and then we'll be on to the next social media platform. Yeah, I mean. I don't see. I, I mean, I, I I see what y'all are saying. I mean, my biggest thing is on the one of y'all said something about you know making it to where people can't go and pull up other people's old tweets and stuff like that. Because I mean, if you look at the landscape of Twitter, when Twitter was first thought of, it was more a more so a free speech, um, a free speech platform. People said what the fuck they wanted to say, um, and you were looked at as either an idiot or just funny, you know, for saying what you wanted to say and. I think now because the world has become so sensitive and so watered down, we look at stuff that was said then. It's like, oh, my God, you couldn't say that now, you know, but 
Um, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see the problem with it. I'm gonna be honest with you. I haven't even used the platform in years, anyways. So I just saw this billionaire dude, you know, purchasing something else. It was like, what's new? You know what I mean? You got all that money. What else can you? What, what else you gonna do with it? You ain't gonna, you know, feed the homeless, right? So let's just go <laughs> by Twitter for, for, for all we know. You know give a fuck. So. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, then I, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Not well to your point. You know, that's an interesting point to make because, like, some people think the deal might not even go all the way through because he's made promises to do certain things in the past and, like, they never came to fruition. Like, you know, like, for example, like feeding the homeless. I think he made a pledge to do that. I think we talked about that earlier. That didn't happen. uh, World world hunger, supposedly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like fixing the pipes in Flint, he pledged to uh, fix that. Clearly, that didn't happen. There's a lot, a number of things that he's dipped his foot into and said, oh, yeah, I can do something about that. And he never did. And maybe Twitter is just the next thing in a line of disappointments. So but go ahead, uh, Reeves. And and uh, sometimes, sometimes, you know, I think people, uh, for lack of a better, better term, sometimes people just like to cap for attention, you know, and that, that. That's their way. That's their way of of getting attention, uh, flashing their money and flexing or whatever. Hey, I got this. I got all this money. You know, look what I look what I can do. You know, uh, you you make a comment, I respond. You know, I'm gonna call your. You know, I'm gonna call your bluff. Oh, oh, y'all don't think I, y'all don't think I got the money to buy Twitter? Bam, let me go. You know, let me go broker the deal. This my final. This my final offer. And basically, all you're doing is just grandstanding. But by the same uh by the same the same token though I, I hear what you're saying chris but then you have to look at it seriously because if we let's not let's not forget you have certain instances January the sixth where a lot of people look to twitter to get their news now i'm not saying it's right or 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 it's wrong but you have people that look toward twitter like in in the old days you know, six o'clock news. That's where people people will watch or people will read the newspaper. You know, now they just pick up their phone and hey, bam, you got it. You got instant reporting, just like you know, just like that in real in real time. So you know, it, 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 it's a gift. It's a gift and it's a gift and and a curse. So I, I don't think we we should really just haphazardly uh, look at it. I mean it. it, it it's it's a, it's a viable tool, and people will use it, and people have used it, used it, and co-opted it to, to you know to fit their own narrative and to fit their own uh, their own needs. So, uh, I mean, and that's it. But that goes that goes hand in hand with all these platforms, though, because they use Facebook for the exact same shit. And Facebook, we know, is owned by a completely different uh, completely different group of people. So, you know what I mean? They use Facebook to do the exact same thing. So, people are gonna always use whatever platform to you know put out their agenda people use Streamyard and spread lies shit that we know is not true people use twitch and shit like in youtube and all those other type of platforms to spread lies and things like that that's not true i don't think the world will ever be unsafe from that i mean but we say that you're gonna give people freedom of speech whether this shit is stupid or not <laughs> people can say what they want to say. I mean, you're not free from consequences, as Charlemagne always says, but I mean, you are free to say what you want to say. You, if that shit come back to bite you, it come back to bite you. It is what it is. But I'm just not for the whole going back 10, 20 years and pulling up some shit because you never know. We Like we were talking earlier, you know what I'm saying? Things that Alcy brought up a topic, things that, you know what I mean, you didn't know you would care about or you didn't think that you would know once you got older. The way you thought when you were in your 20s is not the same way you're going to think when you get in your 30s and in your 40s. So, But should you be called accountable for that, though? I don't think you should because, like I said, you're 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 to an extent, to an extent. Yeah, it depends. Because, I feel like it, it it depends on the person you are present. Yeah, exactly. Like it depends if you're on that same you as that person and you're known for spewing the, the same kind of hatred or disrespectful things that you said back in the past and yes i mean you should be held accountable because you're still going down that path but there are people who say things i've said things you know i'm a totally different person from back when i was in high school or college you know i think totally different and i would tweet things you know you know uh, back then 
that I would wouldn't dare say now, you know, because I'm I'm wiser, I'm a lot older, I know more, and I'm you know, back. I think when you're young, you're still not comfortable with yourself. You're not you don't know yourself, and so to hold you know things against people that they said 10, 20 years ago is just it, it's it's almost not fair, you know, mm-hmm. unless unless they are doing the same thing that they did back then you know then yes i I believe it is a grounds to hold that against them. but then you got to think about like the number one person that i would say arguably that has been banned was trump donald trump he got banned and then like after he stated this big statement about like oh i'm gonna loosen the reins a little bit all of a sudden it was like oh well what if trump gets his ban revoked and then he's back to saying the misinformation and fake news that he's been spreading this whole time, you know. Now, Trump since then has said, oh, I'm not coming back because he has that bullshit social media platform, I guess, that he's trying to launch. But still, you know, I mean, who else might he may give a pass to that otherwise doesn't need to have a voice in such a plat- strong, powerful platform as social media, you know? Yeah, but I mean, you could look at it this way, though. I mean, he's going to find a way to spew his hatred anyway. You know, exactly. that's true. If if people yeah. are going to find a way to, to gravitate towards him, no matter if he's on Twitter, no matter if he's on Facebook, no matter if he's on Instagram, you just said he might build his own platform. So that just gives him, you know, now all the people that like him can just come to his platform. They don't have to it's like a failure, though. I mean, they tried it, but it's America's great again network. Whatever, you know. I mean, but currently it is failing. It is failing right now. Like a last uh, last report I heard. At the end of the day, people are going to gravitate towards what they what they believe in. You can't stop people from believing in what they want to believe in. You know, so to censor him, it's not going to do any good because that's just like somebody being. being you know uh like a I'll, I'll bring this up like a parent is trying to uh basically uh discipline their child or keep them from something you know like they that just makes them gravitate towards whatever they want to do and be more rebellious most of the time you know I, you're not going to let me do this guess what i'm going to sneak out the house and go go see my boyfriend or my girlfriend because you won't let me do it that just makes me want to doing even more you know what i'm saying so that's just how i view i I look at that i think that people are going to find a way to uh to to gravitate towards him either way personally i think one part that some people may gloss over and maybe i'm wrong somebody who's like a uh who's more versed in finance might be able to tell me differently but like there's this youtuber his name is marcus brownlee he's real smart uh you know he has a very popular channel on youtube and he was talking about this thing that made me think about this whole purchase so i don't think this purchase is really about free speech or any of the things that we normally argue about i kind of feel as if like this uh, is all about him getting this company and using the valuation of this company to sink money into Tesla personally. Because so the reason why I bought out Marcus is because he talked about how difficult it is. There's a lot of uh, electric electric vehicle companies that are out there. And if you've ever tried to go into one of these websites, they want you to give a down payment to basically secure your lock on a car. And there's a car that they may say, oh, it's coming out. And it was like in 2019, here we are in 2022, and they still haven't made the car. And the reason why they're doing that is they're trying to gather up money so they can use that money as, you know, basically to get stockholders interested and generate them funds so they can start building. But a company that is a startup, it's hard to get to the the same level as Nissan and Toyota and GM or whoever. Look, GM might be a bad one, but like uh, get to these companies level in order to build a car. So I'm thinking that possibility, there's a possibility he only has this company to build up maybe like the valuation, take that virtual money and sink it into Tesla so that he can progress the, the building of cars. There's plenty of cars that he, even though that Teslas are on the road, there's cars that haven't made it out, like the Tesla truck, uh, the Plaid, I don't think has made it out in big production. There's just so many vehicles that they've talked about. That haven't made it out. So this seems as if like it's more of a chess move, more so than building up my portfolio because I want to make sure races have a platform, if that makes any sense, you know. Yeah. But like that's 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 just that's maybe a conspiracy theory, but like that's just something that I that I thought about when all this came along. And maybe I'm wrong. No, that's I mean that that's definitely a 
good thought, you know, uh, and maybe that is true because Tesla is booming, but maybe he is trying to like build it up even more and, and get it to that level of Nissan, you know, mm. but, any, but anyway, uh, moving into our next topic, man, you know, we got the NFL draft. I'm a little sad and salty. <laughs> my Titans then 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 shipped away the best wide receiver that we had, and probably one of the best. Well, not probably the one of the best receivers in the NFL. So, uh, but anyway, what are y'all guys' thoughts on the NFL draft uh, and and the, the the picks? You know that 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 happened. Uh, well, I'll I, I start it off. My uh. Shout out to my Dallas Cowboys, even though they trash for the draft. But uh, the reason I say they they trash for the draft, they're always trash. Uh, <laughs> they're always trash. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, the the reason I I, I said it is because for us it wasn't it really wasn't a sexy it wasn't really wasn't a sexy <laughs> draft. I mean, it's like one of those meat and potato, one of those meat and potato drafts. Okay, we knew we needed offensive line help, so we got a couple offensive linemen. Defensive, uh, defensive lineman, wide receiver, uh, but it was it, it was it was so many other individuals that you know when you listen to when you listen to uh, um, the experts or the draft nicks or whatever that they were leaning toward or predicting that we could or would be eligible or be available when we drafted. Like it's almost like the Cowboys had a total a total different board from what everybody else was you know everybody else was saying so um this is this is one of those ones where we're like you had to wait three four years down the road and see you know what how this pans out how this pans out for us because i other than offensive the offensive lineman that we got in the first round tyler smith and the defensive lineman from old miss sam sam williams i mean like inst- uh, immediate impact impact players, I don't see, you know, I don't see any coming coming out of this draft for us. But overall, overall, this draft it it, it really lacked it lacked star power to be uh, to be honest. And I think this is indicative because like out of the, look how long you had the first um, first quarterback wasn't picked until pick number twenty, Kenny Pickett, and you know. Malik Willis dropped. I'm talking about so far, you know, so far in the Titans. draft. Yes, yeah, he went, he went to the Titans, but man, it's like I feel like he's gonna be counts another, days, I like, Hill. I feel like it's gonna be another Steve McNair, Eddie George situation with them. That's just that's what I that was the feel that I got when I saw him get drafted, and I know they already got um they already got Derrick Henry there. Wasn't it kind of the same situation when I know I know I was way younger. Y'all were way younger then, but didn't they already have Eddie George and then drafted Steve McNair? Or did they both come in the same draft? Uh, they're around. Well, Steve, uh, McNair McNair was older. McNair was older because he was like ninety. He's like ninety three. Eddie George like ninety four, ninety five, um, somewhere around there. They, I mean, they're not that far. They're not that far apart. But yeah. It so was somewhat of the same situation, just in reverse, kind of. But yeah, that's they, that's kind of that's kind of what I felt when I saw him get drafted. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, so if y'all don't like uh, what happened, of course, with Brown, I mean, do you like the the wide receiver they did get, like the Traylon dude? Like, I mean, he seems like he's going to be. I mean, he, he the uh, the boy's big and good, you know. Yeah, but my my biggest thing is like. I'm just always an advocate for not trading away something that's already proven for something that for pay your talent, man. Yeah, you gotta you, pay. You gotta, gotta pay. Pay, pay the man. The dude, you know, is is like I said, he's one of the best receivers in the league. Uh, he's sure-handed. He's not gonna drop many catch passes, uh, and he is, you know, outside of Derrick Henry, he really is the offense. You know, what I'm saying like. If Derrick Henry's not 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 got it going, or he can't get it going, and you can throw the ball up to AJ, and you know he damn near most of the time going to catch it. So now we're trading him away because we believe some rookie can come in and do the same thing. And it's just like, it's, 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 cheaper. Always, it's about it's money. Not, it's, it's about, it's always about, about, it's always about, about money. money. And I understand the, the, you know, that's the league. And, but 
But when you have something like that and you have a good team, you know, you have a solid team outside of Tannehill. But, you know. Uh, uh, who, who are your other big, big, uh, big, you know, big time, big time uh, contract players? I mean, you got Tannehill, who they extended. You got Henry and, uh, you know, you got Simmons. But who yeah. else are they paying like really big, big money, uh, big money to? It's nobody else that I could really think of. Uh, nobody else. They just signed. I know they just signed Austin Hooper, and then they brought uh, Robert. Don't you have like a linebacker that's like really, really good? Uh, mm, I mean, we have. I can't think of his name. Off the top we got of Bud Dupree from from what you call it. Yeah. I mean, the reason the 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 reason I'm I'm asking is because other than like I said, Simmons, and I don't think they really really broke him off yet. Uh, mm. Derrick Henry and Tannehill, it should be money, you know. Oh, it should uh, be money there. Did, didn't they yeah, get? Man. Didn't they get Robert Woods? Didn't they get Robert Woods? Yeah, they got Robert Woods in the offseason. Yeah. But I mean, like yeah. I was telling, like I was telling one of the guys when I got a guy that I was in the uh, Navy with from Arkansas, and I had put on there. That's the reason why I don't root for Tennessee because they always it's something that Tennessee always does. They trade away good talent. You know what I mean? They don't let good talent develop. And then you bring in somebody like A.J. Brown as a rookie, he proved that, you know, he was a sleeper pick and he was a good pick for them. And I understand, hey, I can bring this guy in to do it for cheaper, but how many countless times have we seen rookies come in and not live up to their name and not live up to what we thought? Dare I say Kevin White? <laughs> I'd still, <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like, dude was, a, was, was this hyped up receiver and didn't do nothing. When you have, I feel like when you have someone, I can understand, you know what I mean? If it's somebody that's productive, but you like, you just productive in our system, go try to mark it out, go to another team. I guarantee you don't do that same thing. With AJ Brown, I can guarantee you he's going to go and do that exact same stuff that he's doing now in Philly. And he's going to make Jalen Hurts look way better than he already is. And yeah, then I mean, your boy Trey Hollywood Brown away? I mean, I'm perfectly fine. Shout out to the Baltimore Ravens because we had a stupendous draft. Reloaded on the, uh, we reloaded our defense, reloaded our offensive line. So we we definitely go we're gonna get there. And then we had a sleeper pick the boy from uh, from from Michigan and towards Achilles. So um, Jabo. Traded, yeah, I'll drop both. Um, we traded away Hollywood, but my thing with that is I didn't have a problem with the the Hollywood trade um, solely because unlike. AJ Brown, Hollywood Brown wasn't a sure handed pass catcher. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's been plenty of times where people try to blame games on Lamar, but Lamar hit him in stride. Lamar ain't the most accurate quarterback. I get that, but there have been plenty of times where Lamar hit that boy in stride, it'll bounce off his pads. Hit the boy in stride, touch his fingertips, bounce off his hands. Like, you know what I mean? You want to go test the market and you want to say, oh, that scheme just, this scheme just doesn't fit for me. This doesn't fit for me. Well, you also not out here trying to fight for yards. I vividly remember watching um, after after Tennessee beat us in that playoff game, first round of the playoffs in 2019, and next year they came to Baltimore. We played them, and I remember that dog on pass catch. AJ caught it on like the 11 on the 20 yard line, broke like six tackles and took that home to the end zone, and then steam rolled a linebacker going into the end zone. Hollywood Brown ain't finna do that shit. Hollywood Brown gonna catch that ball. If he sits anybody coming near him, he gonna tiptoe out of bounds. So you can't say that you 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 want to be this top tier receiver, but you not showing that you want to be the top tier receiver. You know what I mean? So I was perfectly fine with it. And plus, we still got good we still got good talent. Mark my words, Rashad Bateman gonna be better. We still got Tylen Wallace. We still got Devin Duvernay. We got a whole bunch of good receivers, and we're we're a a, a tight end heavy run heavy um run heavy offense and we getting our guys back that were injured last year so we're gonna be all that all that is good though the big question, the, the, big question the, big, the big question the big question is this the big question is this how five eight quarterback gonna see a five eight receiver come on man stop that boy Kyle no, the question is uh, how, uh what lamar gonna do y'all gonna sign him or not see lamar which what you got to realize about lamar my brother <laughs> my <laughs> dallas Cowboys my star <laughs> lamar is worried <laughs> about winning a championship he gonna get his money they gonna break him off you feel me he wanted that just lets you know he's the ultimate competitor he ain't like daiquiri daiquiri hickory daiquiri doc prescott want to get all that money 
out here <laughs> snapping ankles left and right, and then fucking, then can't 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 get the ball from the referee in the center to hike the ball <laughs> the last minute. <laughs> that not his, uh, not <laughs> talk about his pussy ass ankles, no. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, he gonna they, they gonna pay Lamar at the end of the day. They gonna they gonna pay Lamar. Uh, he he they are he already said you know what I'm saying. They've had even even um, that was one thing that they addressed in the media. Um, Eric DeCosta said you know they've been in talks with Lamar about a contract extension. It's just about getting the numbers right. But they're gonna pay him. It's just you know what I mean. Getting the numbers right, seeing where he wants to fit in because he also is trying to get talent around him as well because he knows it's going to take more than just him to win that's one reason why he was kind of up outside of you know i'm saying i know the whole hollywood and him connection to south florida boys growing up you know what i mean that that was that was like a match made in heaven so that was his homeboy it was his brother that got traded away but he's also said in the past you know what i'm saying he needs other receivers he needs other running backs and stuff like that around him he needs a good o-line around him so that way he can be successful so lamar ain't done Hey, good talk, good talk, good talk. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? We all been watching the NBA playoffs, uh, and we're past the first round now, and we're into the second round. Uh, so uh, what have you guys thought so far about the NBA playoffs and everything that's happened? You know, is there anybody that has disappointed you, anybody that surprised you? Uh, let us know what I'll you say, think. I'll say this, and I know y'all defended him when we first had this conversation about him about three episodes ago but y'all boy ben simmons y'all can't keep taking that form that boy had the opportunity to play yeah, in that game i'm through i'm had through the opportunity to play in that game. and the fact that he said that the thought of playing the way he played <laughs> in last year's playoffs was causing a flare up and it was his mental whatever was causing a flare up in his back. <laughs> so he, he wasn't able to play. <laughs> so, I mean, again, we don't, I, you know, we, we, we take mental health seriously. We understand that, you know, people have mental health issues. We are not making fun of anybody with mental health issues. But that dude there, you get paid millions of dollars to dribble the basketball. And you talking about the thought of playing the way that you played last year is causing your mental health to act up, which is causing your back to flare up. How can y'all? How can y'all say that anything that that Joel and Beat or anybody said about him was was wrong? I don't see it. I see. Uh, I mean, I, I I really think that brother. Well, the whole time he was out, I don't know if he did or if he didn't, but if he didn't take it upon himself. The the Brooklyn the Brooklyn Nets should have in I'm talking about made it mandatory that he got some kind of sports psychologist or something to go you know uh, to go see it, to go see it but to me as a competitor you know you would think that once y'all went down once y'all went down 0-2 or 0-3 you know he would have been like hey man let me let me at least try at exactly. least try I mean. Jason Tatum, Jason Tatum just he 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 busting. He busting everybody ass that's trying to guard him. I mean, at least you that ain't got nothing to do. That ain't got nothing to do with you scoring. You go out there and play defense on Jason Tatum. They ain't got nothing. I'm talking about they ain't got nothing to do with offense. You can pass every time you get the ball down on the offensive on the, on the offensive side of the ball. But at least go out there and go play defense. Go get some rebounds or something like that. Man, I'm off that dude. But anyway, Golden State. Golden State is looking good. They're looking good, man. And we're talking before the show started. To me, I mean, y'all say Giannis, and I, I get y'all there. But to me, man, Jordan Poole is playing the best basketball of anybody in the playoffs right now. That boy is balling. I'm talking about oh, balling, and can't nobody can't nobody say they expected. Hey man, you know, hey man, hey man, why ain't you got Jimmy buckets in your name? Ain't you a Heat fan? <laughs> <laughs> you know your boy's still in the playoffs, right? <laughs> boy ain't saying nothing about the Heat. He <laughs> I have two teams that I like. Thank you, sir. I have two teams that I like. Uh, 
I have the Heat and I have Golden State. The folks that won a series without Lowry and uh, uh, who else is hey. out? Yeah. <laughs> Jordan Poole, Jordan yeah, Poole is playing good. the yeah. best basketball of anybody in the playoffs. I'm sorry. I'm just Look, being, I, I, I'm I just love being I love Jordan Poole. I love his game, but I mean to say that he's playing better than Giannis is wild, especially when they're blowing out people left and right. Like, you know, they just blew out Boston. The series against Chicago wasn't even close. Is you know, like them boys look they could have just canceled that after two or three games, like it was over with. You know, that fourth, that that last game, I was just like, you know, are they supposed to be a G League team? Because they don't look like they should be in the NBA right now. But uh, to me personally, I think my biggest surprise was probably Utah. Like, you know, uh, I think they need to blow that team up. I feel like, you know, Donovan Mitchell, I, I heard them talking about him maybe going to the Miami Heat. You know, we'll see. You know, that could be interesting. Uh, but that that team is just such a underperforming team when it comes to the playoffs. It's, it's kind of sad. And I know in they in uh, the Mavericks didn't even have Luca for like two or three games. And you know, he comes. Yeah, Jay, you let Jalen Brunson, who's like five foot nine or some something, you know, just go off for like forty on you. Like uh, it, it's just wild. And I just don't understand Utah. They need to blow. Like I said, they need to blow that team up. That boy Rudy Gobert posted a posted a picture, gets stung by a bee. He got his own personal beehive. He got stung by a bee. Right. I'm like, what is what you doing during a playoffs? Yeah. Nigga, yo, take your big ass. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something else about that team, though. I think uh it's time for them to get younger at the point guard position. Uh, because I think Mike Conley, Mike Conley's past his prime. Yeah, he's past he yeah, Mike Conley is definitely past his prime and you know, no disrespect to the OG man. He's a Memphis legend. You know, forever we always gonna remember grit and grind. But I mean, you can when it's when it's a player time. I mean, maybe he could come off the bench somewhere. But he definitely don't need to be a starting point guard. Uh, and hopefully they'll figure it out. I mean, I I I think I feel like Donovan Mitchell. He takes a lot of bad shots too. Like he's is is uh he should be a little bit seasoned now, but he still tends to take take bad shots and a lot of shots, you know, when he's a guy teammates that can actually shoot the ball, you know, you know it ain't what, like, go ahead. What, what Donovan Mitchell reminds me of, he reminds me of that. What was that? Um, that Dallas Mavericks team with Dirk Nowitzki, Dirk Nowitzki, they got beat by that. We believe team, uh, Steven Jackson and all them boys when they had the mm. number one seed. Yeah. Dirk said that I remember Dirk coming out after they beat Miami. In the finals, they was asking him what was the difference between then and now. And he was like, you know, before I didn't trust my teammates. Now I trust my teammates. I feel like Donovan Mitchell does not trust his teammates. Yeah. And I mean, I guess he has a reason because, I mean, Bogdanovich missed the last shot. But, I mean, you still got to have some kind of faith in your teammates. I mean, that's who you're playing with all season. Mm -hmm. Like, how can you not have trust in those guys? Uh, at the end of the day, win or lose, you should always trust your teammates. In my my personal opinion, but uh, also when you the game of basketball, any team sport is built on chemistry too. Yeah, and, you know, if you don't like your if you don't like the people that you're playing with, or don't like the person, one of the persons that you're that you're playing with, it's gonna throw the whole feng shui. Uh, I mean, of the team, of the team but that's and that's kind of like can a you cop say, out. Did anybody ever really Kobe like and, Kobe? Can you say that when Kobe and Shaq? Exactly. But see, you know? I mean, but yeah. see the thing the thing about that too though is that even Shaq has spoken to it many times. He was like the issue that beef, it was never as big as as people perceived it on yeah. the outside. I, it's all but like, it's we all always had respect. We always had a healthy respect for each other. But what I'm getting at is I don't think Kobe respected whole, with the whole COVID with the whole COVID situation between Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. I think he broke his trust. I think he broke that level of trust in where, like, I just don't respect you. I just don't like you. I don't want to – I really don't want to be anywhere – really don't want to be anywhere near you. And I'm just playing. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to get my stats. Hey, and it is, you know, it is what it – it is what it is. When you're saying – and that and that not trusting other teammates could be a symptom of a bigger, of a bigger problem, you know what I'm saying, of, hey, I, I just really don't want to be here. 
Yeah. But ain't that kind of like just a bunch of prima donnas like out there who don't play their position and then like do the best with what they have? I mean, like everybody trying to like move around and then like trying to get in the best position. Some people who like work with trash and like all and still made it to the playoffs and won. So what is that really? But then you gotta you gotta think about the other dynamic too is you're playing in Utah. Utah is not the most Let's see. How can I say this? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, say less. Urban, say urban less. Friendly. <laughs> urban. <laughs> Utah don't like niggas, people. Yeah, they like people. this. It's more like they this. Don't you like know. Don't <laughs> like, it's, it's not the, it's not the most conducive. I mean, you see, you see like, it ain't Westbrook, South Beach. So, I mean, okay. I put it like this. Strong <laughs> argument. Like strong this. argument. See what happened with your boy. Strong Russ. argument. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, you know. Uh, outside of that, you know, we had the we had the, the net series uh, with Katie and them, and them being blown out was definitely a, a shock as well. Uh, and you also know, to now, speak on the to speak again on the Nets, not to cut you off, but to speak again on the Nets, I'm really getting sick and tired of Kyrie too because I don't appreciate how he goes. He made that post, went in trying to talk, and and and, and yes, I can. There are times that I cannot stand Stephen A. and all of the all of the media and everyone from ESPN, but. I hate when these players, like Kyrie and KD, pretty much try to make everything seem like you're attacking them personally, and you're not. Talking. Even Russell, even Russell Westbrook, they try to make it seem like you're attacking them personally, and you're not talking about their game. And it's like, bro, you play the game of basketball, you are subject to be criticized. Okay, you play the game of basketball. If you don't show up to work and do your job, you are subject to be criticized. You took all this time off because you wanted to. You, you didn't want to get your vaccine and you, you wanted to go fight the good fight, right? But you were still getting paid millions of dollars and you said that you wanted to have other people's back, you know, regular classes back, but you still getting paid millions of dollars where we can't just not show up to work no. and get paid millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? And you talk I about wish. it. It's in you public, know the funny part about that? The funny part about that is like at the end, he was talking about, man, we, uh, we, 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 didn't, we need to jail. We didn't. <laughs> yeah. like, no. I mean, you, you missed over half, missed half the season. I mean, Crazy. what you think? You talking about we didn't jail as a team? Hello. <laughs> I mean, then you picked up two players in the middle. I mean, players in the middle of the season when you traded away Harden. So, uh, yeah, Jalen definitely wasn't a possibility. But I mean. Looking at that series, they would have lost that series anyway, man. I, I just don't – they don't have no defense. Like, who's defending Jalen Brown and, and Jason Tatum? Like, nobody on that team can defend those guys. And, you know, KD, we talked about it. He just needed to toughen up and get that dog in him, you know. Yeah. Meanwhile, you, you got you got Phoenix out there flying under the radar. You got your boy CP3 going yeah, 14 Phoenix for 14. 14 for 14. Phoenix is man, always going was- to be, be tough. I was pulling for the uh, Pelicans, but like I guess that's just because my wife. But whatever, yeah. <laughs> Wishful thinking, I guess. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what Philadelphia looks like. You know, with Embiid yeah, out, man. which could be they 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 by your other team. By your other team. Y'all ain't got no y'all ain't got no confidence in James Harden. No man, what? The if, same. If, if, the the one thing I can say about James Harden, if, if if any NBA rule has affected any NBA player, the rule about them not calling those same ticky tack fouls when they be selling and flopping and stuff has affected him the most. His free throw percentage is down way low. Well, free throw attempts is down way lower than what it's been in the past five years since he's been in, you know, since him being in the league. He is not with them having that new ball, he is not hitting the three the way that he was. And I still think he's you know, suffering from that hamstring injury that he had at the end of last year because he doesn't look as explosive. One thing that you can say about James Harden, as annoying as he may have been to people, he had, you know what I mean, a quick first step, and he could get past you, get to the lane, get a quick and one, or just get a layup, or just go to the free throw line in general, or he can hit a step back. Now he's just he just doesn't look himself, and I don't see him. If he couldn't lead a team to me that was more stacked with – the Houston Rockets, right? If he couldn't lead that team to the NBA Finals where the only team that you really had to worry about at that time was Golden State, there was no other team in the West that was going to do anything with them. How do you think you're going to get past not only Miami, but then turn around and get past Giannis 
and the Milwaukee Bucks. Or Do you know how popping the city would have been if the Rockets would have made it to the playoffs? Uh, well, sorry, made it to like the championship. This pussy ass thing. I hate Martin. Man, kiss, kiss my ass. <laughs> He ain't caught up with Marvin, did he? <laughs> Man, I said Harden. I said Harden. Fuck this nigga. On to the next topic. <laughs> All right, Let's go, man. Marvin. That was a good talk, man. So uh, we're going to move into, you know, we, we've we all had a week to, to view a lot of content. Uh, and I, we just want to see what you guys, what's the best thing you've seen all week or heard, you know. If you, if you got something you'd have heard, we, we know Future dropped his new album for all the, the F boys out there. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, <laughs> all the, the Kevin Samuel elites out there. You know? <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'll start. I'll start. Y'all know what I told y'all, big dog. The best thing that I have heard all week, or the best news that I've gotten all week, your boy got approved for it. Manager position, so I will be moving from the city of Memphis to the tender city of Austin, Texas. So, Austin, here your boy come. I'm bringing that Memphis swagger. You did. I'm finna come down there. I'm not gonna steal the kill. I'm not gonna bring that with me. But you know what I'm saying? I'm definitely gonna come down there and bring that Memphis swagger wherever I go. That Memphis vernacular wherever I go. You feel me? Stop playing with me, cousin. Why did you just call me slaw? I don't know what that means. <laughs> so if you don't get your ass out of my stove <laughs> as soon as possible, <laughs> can you explain to me what that means? Man, get me alone. I like slaw. That goes great with brisket. <laughs> uh, I go. I go next. Um, I saw an interview uh, once again. Uh, the pivot. Uh, they, they had Ric Flair. And it was a really good episode uh, with Ric Flair. And you, I got to see, see a side of Ric Flair that I never saw uh, before. Because, you know, you always hear about the the the, the jet fly. The Rolex. Keeping these the Rolex wearing. You know? But <laughs> he, uh, he, he talked about losing his son. And he he actually and he broke down and started, and, and started crying. Uh, because he, he, talks, he talked about how much he loved his son and how much he blamed himself uh, for his son for his son dying, and that was that was it was kind of heavy. But the thing I can appreciate about the pivot and uh, Channing Crowder, in, in particular, is like he almost like he almost like draws. Well, <laughs> because <laughs> well, folks ain't gonna know. Well, almost like Chris, uh, because he 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 has a he has an uncanny ability. So like it can be a serious moment, like a totally serious moment, and he just has he'll say something or he'll do something to like break the tension, to break the you know to uh, to 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 break the and change and change the whole atmosphere because he went you know Rick Flair was crying and you know what I'm saying it was it was getting real it was getting real deep and uh, and there. Uh, Channing Crowder, he just came in cracking jokes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> in the party, and they went, phew, they went smooth on. I mean, it was it was a great it was a great episode. So like a uh, Rick Flair on uh, on the pivot, it was a really good episode. Uh, I'll go next. Um, so on Netflix, I actually saw this pretty good documentary. I mean, it's it's not something I'm just telling everybody the flock can go see, but it was actually pretty good. It was called uh, <laughs> uh, Special Words, uh, the name of it. I think White Hot, The Rise and Fall of Abercrombie and Fitch. And it was interesting because it talks about kind of like the beginnings of Abercrombie and Fitch. Yeah, I didn't realize it was such an old company up until now. And then just all the controversy they had kind of like in the late 90s to early 2000s and where it finds itself now. And I, I, it's, it's a story. I think it's one of those things where it's something maybe you heard in the news, but like if you weren't rooted in it, you didn't pay a lot of attention to it. It talked about the craze of how, you know, just everybody was wearing that particular brand of clothing and like the status that they thought they had. And then some of their hiring practices, they basically were like, you know, excluding people of color and people who didn't look a particular kind of way in order to have them in the stores. Uh, apparently this homosexual type background that the guy who shot all the pictures for the, like the, the materials in there, like how, 
like just just uh, it, the story is wild and you know it, and it's just stuff that like maybe i remember it maybe i don't remember it and it's like hearing the backstory to it all it's like oh yeah that all does make sense now and it was just a pretty interesting kind of step back into you know my high school years slash you know early 2000s and like uh, i feel so sorry for when they did try to introduce like um diversity into like the company and you had like these two lone black people trying to tell a, a board full of white people like hey you need to stop doing some of these things and they're like okay wait until the court case passes it was it's a wild story uh and it was just interesting more so than anything else but like uh definitely something that is worth watching if you don't have anything else to watch more on netflix bad 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 uh, the best thing I've seen all week is probably the series finale of Ozark. Uh, I don't know if y'all, if anybody watches Ozark, but it's a really good show. Took me a while to get into it, uh, but I once I did, I binged the whole thing up to season four and had to wait for the end of the show. Uh, but anyway, you know, spoiler alert, uh, The one of the best characters in the show dies, uh, sadly. You know, uh, I won't reveal any names, but... You know, uh, just in case you guys haven't watched it, want to watch it, but just know that somebody uh, very important in the show is killed. Uh, but anyway, it's it's a really good show, a uh, really good ending. Uh, I thought they they did a good job, you know, uh, building up the 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 dramatics of the show as it went along, and you know, seeing how it climaxed and then ended at uh, ended at the end was really really solid. So good job. Uh, to the producers of Ozark. And uh, another thing that I saw real quick, you know, uh, was uh, the Orlando Brown interview with No Jumper. Uh, it was just nice seeing seeing him in a positive, uh, positive vibe, with a positive vibe. He's off the drugs, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, shouts out to the young brother. I'm glad that he's finally getting it together. And it seems like he's got his head on his shoulders. And, uh, Man, uh, Donald Glover, what the hell are you doing with Atlanta, man? I don't know if anybody been watching Atlanta, but you know, I've been meaning to catch up on it. I've been meaning to like, catch up on it. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm gonna need y'all to do a little bit better, man. You know, they they're doing this thing where they show one show with Paperboy and all them, and then they do another show that is totally different from everything. And I mean, hopefully they're gonna tie it all in at the end, but it's just really weird. And the the episodes without them are kind of uninteresting. Well, uh, most of them are anyway. But anyway, mm -hmm. y'all have reached the end of the episode. And you know what I'm saying? We appreciate y'all watching. You know, don't forget, man, like, comment, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Tell your grandmama to tell your grandpappy to tell your great aunt about they going to feel me. Now, Dino, go on and do your thing, my brother. Oh, 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 it's my turn now, huh? It's your turn. We hope you all have a great night. And if you didn't feel us this time, I guarantee you will feel us the next. Get your motherfucking ass off my screen. What's going on, YouTube family? It's your boy, Reese. And if you like what you saw today and you would like to see more content from the They Gonna Feel Me podcast, click on this video over here. Now, peace. <laughs>